Let me tell you a story. A little while back, I was working for a company that was looking to hire a software engineer. In the process of working with my colleagues, sorting through resumes, trying to find the best candidate, one particular resume caught my eye. The candidate in question, we're calling him John Doe, undergrad at Stanford, in the four years after his graduation, had had some pretty incredible work experience. He had all of the right languages that we were looking for in the skills section. I'm talking Java, Ruby on Rails, Perl, C, you name it. If you've been in my position, what would you have thought? You see, I took one look at the resume and I was amazed. He seemed like the ideal candidate. Great school, great experience. All the skills we were looking for. When we brought him on site, however, and eventually ended up bringing him on the team, we found that uh, though John could put all of the right keywords on his resume, he lacked the analytical and computer science fundamentals that we needed. He could code brilliantly, but when it came down to it, without that strong foundation, he couldn't answer the more complex problems that he would end up facing. He ended up not being a fit for the role, and within a matter of weeks, I left the company. My name is Nikos Buse, and the scenario I just described and that I experienced is far from unique. This is an experience that affects tech companies of all sizes and descriptions. I joined Buzz Technologies because I want to be part of the team that solves this problem. Because with Buzz, we can give you a view into your candidate's true skills before you even meet them. Using our platform, hiring managers can make better on-site decisions because they'll know a candidate's strong and weak points before the candidate ever even walks into the room. So here's how it works. The candidate and the a veteran software engineer both log into the platform and get on a call together. We use these veteran software engineers who we refer to as heroes to run the assessment, and we rely on them heavily because we believe firmly that the person best qualified to assess an engineer is another engineer. I should note here that we at Buzz take on all the logistical difficulties. We schedule the interview, we ensure that the platform is running, we do all document exchange, we take what is typically an absolute mess and turn it into a process that is simple and smooth for candidates and clients alike. So next I'd like to take a look at kind of what, what we do looks like. So at a glance, using our assessment, hiring managers can determine a candidate's overall capabilities and how he or she compares to the other individuals who we've assessed. You can see here. So generally speaking, I'm not going to recommend that anyone bring Jay on site. As a one-star candidate, he's absolutely someone that no one should talk to. But for the sake of the presentation, let's dive in a bit deeper into his summary. So with the summary, I can see a candidate's overview feedback from the hero. I can see his strengths and weaknesses. And if, for whatever reason, the one-star rating and the initial graph was not enough reason for me to recommend you don't bring him on site, Move no further than the pros and cons that are included. As someone who cares a lot about teams functioning well, I'm thrilled that Jay has fantastic communication skills. As someone that, who's trying to hire a software engineer, I'm less than thrilled that he does not have strong problem-solving capabilities. I don't love that he can't code very well. So in this manner, I'm able to get even more information about him. But where I get most excited is someone who would have to make a hire is in this areas to test for the next interview. It allows me to know how best to structure an on-site interview so that I can be as productive as possible and probe in all the right areas. Next, I'd love to dive into the fundamentals section. So in this section, I can see not just the question and response that a candidate gave, but also what the rationale was behind the particular rating that a candidate's response received. In this instance, for example, the candidate, I can find out by just looking, did not understand lambdas and methods well enough, and as a result, is not going to get particularly high marks on the question. When we look at question two, unfortunately it seemed as a bit darker. Even with heavy hinting, the candidate was completely out of his depth and unable to answer the question. In the third question, however, there's a bit of redemption. I love this because, as someone who's going to make a hire, I want to know where the candidate does well. And in this case, 
Jay not only answered the question, he went above and beyond the remit of the particular question so as to demonstrate his knowledge. At Buzz, we don't just want to show you where a candidate went wrong in an interview, but also where his or her strong points could be. Having looked at this, I would then look at the coding challenge. So this is also fantastic for me as a hiring manager because I will see not just the question that a candidate received in terms of demonstrating his or her ability to code and what the answer was, but I can watch in somewhat faster than real time how the candidate responded, how long it took them to respond, and what the thought process was behind that response. What's even more fantastic is that four non-technical individuals, those five zeros that we discussed, are providing a write-up of why they decided the candidate received a more positive or negative rating on the question, but they got it right or wrong. Ultimately, we find that after using our platform, very few companies can go back to the old black magic resume phone screen model. Our platform works seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We run assessments until late in the night and on weekends. We ensure that our clients spend valuable time only with qualified candidates. Next, I'd like to have my colleagues, Renee and Jack, take care of the Q&A. Thank you very much. That was really nice. I'm Jack. This is Renee. So is the hero someone that's affiliated with the client in some way, or is it a buzz-specific uh, expert that they should um, our heroes are specific software engineers that are on our platform. They're not uh, actually affiliated with the client, but they are buzzing clients. Where do you get questions? Uh, that's a great question. We actually design... Oh, I said, where do we get the questions? Um, we actually design the tests pretty much on an individualized basis for our clients based on job description. Um, so we have some of our senior engineers doing research on what the best questions would be. And we generally bounce those questions off the hiring managers to make sure that they would give the reasonable <laughs> for the job that they would How many people interview each candidate? Uh, we do one engineer to one candidate. So it's a pretty simple process. Who are you currently working with? Not supposed to bring up too many names, but uh, MobilityWare is one of our biggest clients down in uh, Southern California. They have a big produce solitaire, so there's no time to increase for the training space. Come on, guys, any more questions? Like, if you fail at the interview, can you try again, or are you kind of just, you know? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, if you fail at the interview, we actually try to give you reasonably helpful feedback. So that form that we just produced, uh, if you were a candidate and you got a two or a three star rating, and we send that to you, we you know the areas you need to improve for your next year. Thank you, Reverend Models. Thank you so much for um, Actually, we just sell the package of this. We're not trying to uh, produce per candidate. Is it possible to take the interview without like, having a company that you're applying for? Like, just to see how you do it? Yeah, actually, we're going to be starting that in the next couple of weeks. Um, what, what field did you, did you, did you hear in support? Um, we're generally, uh, what, what fields do we support? Uh, right now, we do everything from machine learning all the way through Python, Java, Scala. So it's pretty much just applied to computer science and software engineering right now. Um, in the future, we're considering looking at finance and some other As previous speaker mentioned, the situation when candidate listed tons of skills, so should he perform a lot of interviews in your platform? Um, he said, in a situation where a candidate produces a ton of skills on their resume, how do we interview for that? Yes. Um, well, this day age, everyone lists a ton of skills on their resume. So that's why our slogan is uh, higher skills, not labels. So we would actually just probably probe into the fundamentals early on, and then as the interview goes, our answer is actually adapted, right? So as they get questions correct, it will start scaling in difficulty, and you'll be able to see what their real skills are, and what's just listed on the resume. Yeah, so uh, uh, 
how do you choose heroes? I mean, who's testing heroes if they are actually capable of testing someone else? That's a great question. He said, how do we pick the heroes? So the way we pick the heroes is we actually use our internal engineers to run them through the very same platform, and they have to meet a certain benchmark in each skill area that they will actually be delivering these exams on. So we can have some heroes that can cross over Java and Python. We have a couple guys that are good AI engineers that also can pick up other languages. And we tested them pretty extensively on all those languages. Uh, no. You've got internal engineers sort of hiring the heroes for a particular profile, and the heroes also interviewed in a particular way. Aren't you sort of generating a homogenous candidate pool out of the we generally interview, uh, instead of generating a homogenous candidate pool for service, um, I would spin that in the way that we respond to our clients. So whatever the clients need to interview, <laughs> that's where the pool is being built up right now. Um, we do keep heroes in reserve in certain uh, areas that we believe we'll see growth in the future. Like I mentioned, AI and machine learning. These are areas that are picking up greatly right now. Sorry, can I kind of follow up? I don't, I don't mean uh, homogeneity in terms of the technology. I mean, if you have a certain people, number of people writing particular questions for, let's say, Ruby or PHP or whatever it is that you do, those people are writing that question. So people who are going to do well in those questions all fit into the profile. How do you guarantee sort of diversity of being able to record all kinds of things? So how do we make some questions are uh, answerable by diverse audience. Uh, this is actually something that we've studied a lot. One of the products that I'm trying to uh, manage and bring to light here is actually relating to race and gender blind interview. And one of the things we're doing on that is we actually have a team of engineers that selects the questions that are allowed to be placed on these exams. That team is made up of two males and two females, and there are differing uh, age brackets and ethnicities so that we uh, can create a consensus that the questions will be fair to everyone. I think that's a lot of confidence. Uh, especially for people with dyslexia, English language learners, um, kids who are learning how to read, these metrics go up astronomically. And so it's used at a ton of schools. Um, with Stanford Medical School, we'll be doing a different type of study that'll be looking at specific medical issues. Um, and then University of Texas Austin is doing a general study, which will look at general usability concerns. But yeah, reading speed, reading comprehension, and also things like maintaining attention on a page. Did you say retention as well? Um, so I said attention. Um, retention probably isn't affected by this, um, except that if you're reading more than you're retaining more, uh, but not specifically retention, yeah. Do you work with um, some of the special programs for like autism? We, so the question was about autism. Um, we are partnered with the largest autism charity in the UK, and they're testing out with, with their folks. Autism is uh, different for each individual. And so for some folks, it's very, very helpful. For other folks, um, it doesn't make a difference. Or they're not necessarily even, <coughs> even reading. I think we have time for one more question. Yeah. Related to some of those questions, if, you're, if you use it in education, do you have any uh, data that suggests that when a kid learns to read this way, that he can then he or she can then go read a regular black and white? So the question was about sort of the retention of the benefit, I think. Um, if you read with this and then you go read a newspaper, for example. Uh, we don't have specific data on that, but what we've heard, this was a concern of ours when we started out, we don't want to make this little crutch. But what we've heard from users is, if anything, the opposite, which is I read with this and then I can track better when reading other stuff, um, which is the opposite, but we're still looking at more data. Um, one last thing, shoot me an email if you want free promo codes for our various apps and plugins. Thanks so much.